We are back with a Fox News alert. Brand new details this morning surrounding Jeffrey Epstein's apparent suicide. Yeah, the autopsy reportedly showing broken bones in his neck, raising more questions about his final cause of death. Fox News contributor Andrew McCarthy served as chief assistant U.S. attorney for the Southern District of New York and had defendants in the same jail at one time or another. He joins us right now live. Good morning. Good morning, morning to you. Apparently, um, broken bones in the neck, but one in particular, the hyoid bone near the Adam's apple, which is more common in strangulation murders than suicidal hangings, it is written in this morning's papers. Yeah, but what you what you just said, the word strangulation may be less important than the words more common. Mm -hmm. uh, it's not inconsistent with suicide. And what I hate about these leaks is... You Autopsy get, leaks. Any kind of leaks about investigations where people cherry pick what facts that they want to put out under circumstances where we know in most investigations we need to have a comprehensive understanding of, of everything. And you can put too much or too little emphasis on individual facts. Uh, to me, I would want to know if they actually had video of the common areas of, of the jail mm -hmm. and they could tell whether someone else was able to get in and out of the cell. That to me would be at least as important a piece of evidence as what what do you think really autopsy. happened i'm going to assume it was a suicide until there's powerful evidence that there's not um, that that's what it looks like to me and I, I think there's gross incompetence here and it's unfortunately it's not surprising incompetence that yeah. particular institution has not got a great reputation even in federal circles Andy, what i want to see is a excuse my using this phrase as right. a lead into your next segment, uh, a John Durham type investigation where everybody that is investigating is non-partial, bipartisan. I want the cleanest thing in the world to investigate this just so that as Americans, we can feel confident and know what happened. Is that realistic? I hope it is. You know, it, it, what's, what's really sad is that you have to describe it that way. Right. Because it used to be implicit that that was what these investigations were. I, I, you know, I'm very proud to have been at the Southern District of New York for almost 20 years. Right. Um, I, I think we would, have, we would have taken umbrage at the suggestion that it, investigations were any other way, but you know, this is the world where we're talking about it because it's now. fascinating. We want to yeah. know what happened within that jail cell, but ultimately we care. Mo we have to remember the victims. This, all these women that are claiming that he sexually assaulted them at an early age when they right. were minors. What happens to them? When do they get justice? Well, you, you know, Ainsley, the thing I think we can take heart from is that Attorney General Barr has been very clear that this case is going on, this investigation is going on. One of the things that was notable reading the indictment is that the first charge is a conspiracy charge, so that he is not the only, or he was not the only person who was alleged to have uh, been at the root of this abuse. And Barr says this is going to continue. So it's going to continue in the criminal context. There's going to be civil litigation, and I think the victims will get justice. Andy, let's talk a little bit about your brand new book. It's available everywhere right now. It's called uh, Ball of Collusion, the plot to rig yeah. an election and destroy uh, presidency. Uh, you said, you write in the book, uh, there was no collusion between uh, President Trump's campaign and the Russians, but there was collusion between... Well, I think that the... The Obama administration put the law enforcement and intelligence apparatus of our government in the service of the Clinton campaign. So the collusion was between Obama and Clinton? Yes, and it was the use of these counterintelligence powers and law enforcement processes in our political process, which is never supposed to happen. But it did, according to your book. Well, I, I, I tried in the book to, to not make assertions that I couldn't back up, and it's, I, I think it's pretty richly footnoted and corroborated, which is more than you can say for, say, the dossier. You know, why did you write the book? What, what was your inspiration? Well, you know, I started out uh, having covered a lot of the, uh, the Clinton emails mm -hmm. case and the Trump-Russia case. And what, what bothered me was the difference in the quality of justice that was afforded. I don't think any objective person can look at those two investigations and say the same quality of justice was afforded to each. But the other thing is, I think I was essentially wrong about something I felt very strongly about at the beginning. I told people that there was no way they would take an uncorroborated bit, screed of political opposition and take it to a federal court to get a surveillance warrant. And I told people they were crazy to think that the FBI and the Justice Department would ever do that. So I wanted to know why was I so 
spectacularly right. wrong. And I think the answer is, in every investigation, the investigators always think that their bad guys are the worst bad guys in the history of bad guys. Mm -hmm. And what you always need is the adult supervision of leadership, headquarters, whether it's at the Justice Department or the FBI, to police the inevitable tendency people have to push the envelope. And I think what happened here, Ainsley, is supervision became the investigator. Mm -hmm. And when they pushed the envelope, there was nobody there to tell them no. Right. Yeah. Andy, how hot, I, I saw the president uh, answered a question up on Capitol Hill from a reporter about how high he thought uh, this went in the Obama administration. And he said, I really shouldn't answer, but you, you know what I think. How high do you think it did go? Steve, these were counterintelligence investigations. They're different from criminal. Criminal investigation is the vindication of the rule of law in judicial proceedings. Counterintelligence investigations belong to the president. They're only done for one reason, and that is to gather intelligence so that the president can carry out his national security responsibilities under the, pro under the Constitution. So any counterintelligence investigation is the president's investigation. This, this goes to the West Wing. It goes to the president. That, that's the way it's supposed to work. If, it do, if, if it's not working that way, then it shouldn't be a counterintelligence investigation in the first place. But here we don't have to speculate because there's plenty of indication that President Obama was informed and knew what, exactly what they were doing. Holy cow. Wow. All right. Uh, Got to read this book. It's yeah. available everywhere. It's called Ball of Collusion. Well, thank you. Andy, thank you very much. Thanks. Thanks.